Do you know what's about to happen? I'll tell you. A totally unexpected rapture. We're going to talk about that. I'll get to some comments of the day, some news headlines, and we'll hang out. My name is Tom. You're watching the Watchman River Channel. And as I do every single day, I'll remind you I'm not a prophet. I'm not a pastor. And I'm not even a great teacher. I'm just a dude that really loves the Lord. I love talking about the Lord. And I love hanging out with you guys. So get comfortable. Grab yourself something to eat and drink. Maybe you want coffee or tea. Ooh, have some sweet tea and some Cincinnati style chili. Or grab whatever you like to eat and drink when you're hanging out with an old friend and a fellow servant of the Lord. Let's get busy. First, I've never done this in 15 months. Anyone who's watched me knows this. I never talk about share this video, subscribe to my channel, you know, because I just leave it in the Lord's hands and he's done a pretty good job at growing this channel. But help, I'm stuck right now. I'm at 66,000 subscribers. I hate that number. Please, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Please push me to 67 quickly. I think I'm at 66,200. But I just want to get away from the 6-6. Six, six. It's driving me nuts. I know it's a little, you know, problem I have. I just can't stand that number. So help me, all right? <laughs> I want to be out of there by like this afternoon, all right? All right, so let's get busy. So you have to realize something. The rapture of the church, a pre-tribulation rapture, is totally and completely unexpected by the world. See, what happens is you and I are obsessed with Jesus and we're rapture heads. We talk about the rapture all the time because we're in the season. All the signs have converged. We're waiting for it. We know it's about to happen. So we talk about it all the time. But you have to understand something. The world is completely unexpecting the rapture. It's completely unexpecting it. If you line up, I venture to say this, if you go anywhere and you line up 10 people, not people who, you know, you hang out with that are believers or whatever. I'm just talking, line up 10 random people, go to a mall, go to a city, go to a school, line up 10 people, and you say, what's the rapture? I guarantee you, way more than half of them, probably seven or eight out of 10, would say, I have no, I have no clue what you're talking about. Because the world is not expecting the rapture of the church. We are, but the world is not. That's why it says, as in the days of Noah, they were eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage, and then sudden destruction comes. Like they, they don't expect what's going to happen. It's going to hit them. Can you, listen, can you imagine the day the rapture happens? Can you, I thought about this recently because somebody put it in the comments, and I had never really thought about this, but think about all the security camera footage that's gonna be around of people disappearing or whatever way it, it comes down. Picture all the smartphone and iPhone footage that's gonna be shared around the world. Can you imagine? Picture footage of cameras in a hospital shining, you know, looking down on a, on a room full of newborns and all of a sudden they're gone. Picture elementary schools all of a sudden empty with just the teachers running around. Can you imagine the chaos? It's going to be complete and total chaos on an unsuspecting world, an unexpecting world. We're about to, I, I really think the rapture is, you know what I think. I think it's very very soon. I think we're in the final moments before the rapture. I've told you before, God didn't whisper this in my ear. Don't mishear me when I say that. God did not whisper it in my ear, but I think it's this year. I really do. I think you take 2023, you add seven years, that's when the second coming of Christ will be. That's 2030. Everything's geared toward the 2030 agenda. I just think everything's fallen into place and we're about to be raptured. I believe it's this year. If I'm wrong, I'll apologize. I promise. You can throw a tomato at me, okay? Um, in 1 Thessalonians 5, 2 through 6, I've been reading this a lot lately because I really want something to sink into your head, okay? So many Christians say, oh, don't talk about the rapture. No one knows the day or the hour. He comes like a thief in the night. We won't know. He comes unexpected. Like, no, 
what are you doing? You know, just move on with your life. So I read 1 Thessalonians 5, 2 through 6. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. And that's where they stop reading when they say he comes as a thief in the night. We know, All right. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, and this is where they should continue reading. But you, brothers, brethren, brothers and sisters are not in darkness so that this day should overtake you as a thief. To us, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't, the rapture shouldn't come as a thief in the night. We're expecting the day. We're seeing the day as it approaches. All right. But you, brethren, are not in darkness so that this day should overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. See, the rapture is going to be totally unexpected to the world. And sad to say, it's going to be totally unexpected to, to some Christians. They're still going to go in the rapture, but they just don't look for it. They just, it's going to be unexpected. It's going to shock them. It's going to shock many people. But we are supposed to, being sons of light, we're supposed to see that day approaching. And that's exactly what's happening right now. We are seeing the day approaching. We're seeing everything set up in the world for it. And we're waiting with eager anticipation. We're waiting for our Lord Jesus to come get us. Take us up to the cloud. We're going to meet him in the clouds. We're going to sail off to heaven with our Lord and Savior and be with him forever. And then we're coming back in seven years behind him. What a plan Jesus has for those who trust in his finished work and his atoning blood to wash as white as snow. What a plan Jesus has for us. It's so exciting. It's so, sometimes I wake up. I remember one day a while ago, I was making the bed <laughs> in my bedroom and I'm kind of walking around and making the bed and I was kind of, you know, sore as I usually am with neuropathy and, and, uh, all of a sudden I just, I don't know what it was. It just, it just came over me. Like Jesus has an incredible plan and it's about to happen. And it was just so uplifting to realize that this is all so temporary where we are right now and the way you're feeling right now, and maybe the abuse you've had in your life that's just hard to push out of your mind, or maybe the you're very sick and you're hurting, or maybe you're just discouraged, but man, this is all temporary. Jesus has a plan for us, and it's amazing. It's amazing. He's going to give us new bodies in the twinkling of an eye, and then Harpazzo, we're shooting off to heaven with Jesus. Man, to not know Jesus now, you don't realize what you're heading into with this seven-year tribulation. We'll talk about how you can know Jesus in a little while. First, we're going to get to some news headlines, <clears throat> see what's going on in this nutty world. This is from a source I don't ever usually go to, but it's from NPR, and it's Russia's nixing of the Ukraine grain deal deepens worries about global food supply. On July 17th, the Russian government announced that it was pulling out of a deal to facilitate the export of millions of tons of grain from Ukrainian ports. The arrangement had been in place since July of 2022. The Kremlin's move immediately sparked concern, particularly in food insecure countries. The Kenyan government was quick to denounce the withdrawal as a stab in the back. Um, for drought hit nations in the Horn of Africa. UN Secretary General said that Russia's withdrawal will strike a blow to people in need everywhere. And I happen to think, because the grain prices now are going through the roof since this happened the past few days, I happen to think this is all leading to the famine that's talked about in the seven year tribulation. In the first three and a half years, horrific famine. And I think we're just seeing the beginning of it because I think we're about to be raptured. Um, this says wheat prices spike after Russia bombs Odessa grain port in Ukraine and threatens to attack ships. Global wheat futures and indicator of prices for the coming season made their biggest one day jump since Russia invaded Ukraine 17 months ago, prompting fears 
it would become unaffordable for the world's poorest populations. Just got to pray for people around the world as we, uh, as the world gets ready to enter into a mind-blowingly depressing, chaotic time, the seven-year tribulation. We got to pray for them because we can pray for them now, what they're going to go through. I just wish so many more would turn to Jesus and be raptured with us. This is from Amir Sarfati's in uh, Telegram. Russia and Ukraine have announced that starting at midnight, ships sailing to the other side's ports in the Black Sea will be military targets. Russia has also stopped the grain agreement. Ukrainian wheat is rotting in warehouses. Uh, that can have a domino effect in many parts of the world. I believe it will. I think it's casting that giant shadow to famine. From the Jerusalem Post, Hezbollah-affiliated cleric says war with Israel can bring Lebanon out of crisis. Boy, do they want war. Hezbollah-affiliated cleric Sheikh al Nubulsi stated about a war with Israel could deliver Lebanon from its ongoing political and economic crisis in an interview with the Lebanese al Jadid TV earlier this month. Quote, the existence of Israel is an act of war against us. Did you hear what he said? The existence of Israel. See, it doesn't matter how Israel treats anyone. It's just they exist. And that crosses the red line for these people. The existence of Israel is an act of war against us. It is not Hezbollah that is instigating war. You spoke earlier about the firing of rockets and so on. The very existence of Israel is an aggression against Lebanon, said Nabalsi. A war with Israel can deliver us from crisis. Really? Some people may ask how a war with Israel may bring us out of crisis. The cleric pointed to the ongoing stalemate in attempts in Lebanon to elect a president, stating that if, despite the dialogue and the various understandings and initiatives, we are unable to reach a formula for electing a president, war could turn out to be the best way to change the equation. That's some crazy thinking. But that's what they're thinking, and they are poking, and we are getting very close, perhaps days away, from Israel going through very hard times. Because I believe they are on the cusp of a war. Meaning, in the next couple weeks, I believe that it could happen. Next, <clears throat> Iran moves toward possible atom bomb test in defiance of Western sanctions. A fresh batch of damning European intelligence reports reveal that the Islamic Republic of Iran sought to bypass United States and EU sanctions to secure technology for its nuclear weapons program with a view toward testing an atomic bomb. Is this any surprise for anyone who's paid attention, even a little bit, while we were throwing millions upon millions of dollars at them? Did we really think they weren't <laughs> building a bomb? Come on. According to the Middle East Media Research Institute, which first published translations of the intelligence documents on its website, the security agencies of Sweden, the Netherlands, and Germany revealed sensitive data during the first six months of 2023 on the Iranian regime's illicit nuclear weapons proliferation activities. The reports mainly cover Iran's alleged illegal conduct in 2022. We know they didn't want nuclear energy for, for energy purposes. Come on. All right, it's here. We've talked about this. How many months have we talked about it? But the Federal Reserve has officially launched the FedNow Instant Payment Service. The Federal Reserve launched its FedNow Instant Payment Service Thursday, yesterday, following several years of developing a system officials say will allow the faster flow of cash for businesses and individuals. I love the, how they paint it so pretty. <laughs> Whether it's providing instant access to paychecks, allowing for last minute bill payments, or sending government payments out to individuals, the system is expected to improve the flow of money through the U.S. economy, unless you say something that falls out of line, and then they can quickly shut you off. I added that last little bit. You probably know that. The Federal Reserve built the FedNow service to help make everyday payments over the coming years faster and more convenient. So there you go. It's live now. It's there. Everything is set up for the seven-year tribulation. Everything is set up for Antichrist to walk in and just push a button. Everything's set. 
Hey, listen to this one, man. WorldCoin CEO. World ID is coming whether you like it or not. This is from yesterday. World ID is coming whether you like it or not. The CEO of WorldCoin has warned that a global digital ID system will be ushered in for citizens around the world, whether they like it or not. WorldCoin has developed a system that it pitches as the world's largest identity and financial public network. Essentially, the company has created a database that links digital cash or central bank digital currencies with a digital identity system. That's going to include some health records, too. The company has created its own form of digital money called the WorldCoin token. According to WorldCoin's executives, World ID or something like it will soon be mandatory for anyone who wishes to partake in regular society. Oh, the rapture's not for 10 years. <laughs> I just, I'll never get that thinking. The rapture's not for 50 years. It's, you know, if it's not, I don't even believe in a rapture. We're going to be here another 300 years before Jesus comes back. You think so, huh? No, it's all set up. It's all set up. I say it every day and we see more evidence of it every day, especially the last few months. Because like birth pains, we are just seeing these signs more and more and more coming at us. Look at the, some of the weather, weather going around the world, okay? Rare powerful thunderstorm in Croatia claims four lives and leaves over 2,000 injured. Next, record rainfall, massive flooding in Kentucky prompts evacuation and a state of emergency. Next, 16 injured as North Carolina experiences a rare July EF3 tornado. Next, we've got deadly heat claims first life in Italy and Spain faces 44 Celsius as heat wave hits tourist hotspots. That's 113 degrees. Next, let's look at some earthquakes from the last 24 hours. I only look at the ones that are 4.5 4 and up, okay? We got a 5.0 in Papua New Guinea. We got a 4.9 in Indonesia. We got a 4.5 in Iran. We got a 4.8 in New Caledonia. We got a 4.7 in Chile. We got a 4.8. I sound like an auctioneer, don't I? <laughs> we got a 4.8 in Indonesia. We got a 4.5 in the Solomon Islands. We got a 4.9 in Indonesia. We got a 4.9 in, in different part of Indonesia. We got a 4.6 in the Banda Sea. We got a 4.6 in another part of Indonesia. Do you, do you see, like, we're, we're getting strong earthquakes. Every I could do this. I might do this every day. I might do my auctioneer <laughs> earthquake report because you can see them every day. And I'll just do the ones 4.5 or stronger. But they're all over. They're happening all over. All right. <clears throat> Before we get to comments of the day, we have to visit. We'll stroll down the lane that leads to Clown World. Okay. Here we go. Get ready for this one. Get ready. <laughs> Get ready. This is what they have in store for you to eat. Pig beans. Okay. The latest GMO frankenfood, transgenic foods. Here we go. One of the latest GMO frankenfoods is piggy suey. It's a soybean genetically engineered to contain pig protein. One or more undisclosed pig genes are spliced into conventional soya to create a soybean with 26.6% animal protein. I'll just take water, please. I'll just have water. <laughs> this stuff, uh, you know what? The people that are left behind, like they're going to face really bad stuff, but they're going to be eating like really bad stuff. You've got to turn to Jesus because this sounds, I just don't like splicing pigs to have animal protein and beans. It's just like, can't, can we just, you know, can we just have a burger? <laughs> I laugh because it's not funny. Like this is all crazy, but I'm just, we're seeing everything line up and the seven year tribulation is speeding at us faster than a bullet. It's about to happen. Comments of the day. Cal, you ready? It, let, let's go to him. I think it'll it'll calm me down. I got to get the pig suey out of my mind. All right. Robin Buckeye, my buddy and the moderator for the channel. He said, before the rapture, expectation. After the rapture, total chaos. I love that, Robin. You're right. That chaos is going to be nuts after the rapture. Jeff Mills. Uh, if you guys watched my video yesterday, I read a story about missionaries and... Uh, 
It's a good story. So this is in response to that. And this is a great comment. Jeff Mills, dear Tom, if you only knew how today's message hit home for me, I am a British missionary here in Guatemala for the past 30 years. I had a bad accident, which led to 13 operations on my spine and one on my neck. I lost my beautiful wife to COVID two years ago, and now I have debilitating pain and felt no one was caring. I felt at the lowest in my life until I listened to the first few minutes of today's message about the missionary couple. I just knew this message was for me. God cares for me and is by my side. I was truly lifted up by your message, and I'm now very excited that the rapture is imminent. God bless you, Brother Tom, for obeying the Lord. That really blessed me, Jeff. If you guys didn't hear that, just go to yesterday's video, and uh, it's I do it right away. It's in the first few minutes of the video. You can, Then you can hear the story of the missionaries, because it is a it's an incredible story. Cindy, it's either Kelsevik or Jelsevik. I don't just see the day approaching. I see the day upon us. Come, Lord Jesus. I agree, Cindy. I agree. E.J. Gardner. It was just this past January 14th that he so graciously gifted me his eternal grace and mercy. I didn't deserve it, nor do I even now, but I'll take it and I'll cherish it praying for you and our family members, all of our brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen, E.J. Gardner. So think about it. If Jesus had come last piece of trumpets, E.J. Gardner wouldn't be with us. God, always remember, Jesus comes in his perfect time. His perfect timing. Mary uh, Grieves, I probably butchered your last name, but someone was talking about this world and just didn't know what was going on. So I shared with her the scriptures. Praise God. She has turned to Jesus. God bless us all. Praise God, Mary. It's so incredible. I love to hear about people in these last moments. You know, the world, the world looks at salvation. Like, wait a minute. You guys really like that system? It's so unfair. You've been a Christian for decades you see, because they look at it like it's painful to be a Christian. Like we, oh, you guys can't drink or smoke. You can't do this. You can't. They look at it as a list of rules. So they go, what a system you have. So you're a Christian for 30 years. And then somebody just comes to the Lord, either right before they die or right before the rapture. And you guys celebrate it. Like they, they don't even have, they didn't even have to suffer throughout their lives. <laughs> but we look at it so different. We look at it so different. I don't care if a man has partied his entire life and had 50 wives. If he comes to Jesus in those last 30 seconds of his life, I am going to stand up and applaud because that's the beauty of grace and mercy. That's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of it. I love to hear about people that turn to Christ in the final moments. And I feel like people who are turning to Christ right now are doing so when the church age, the window is just this little sliver because it's closing and it's just about closed because Jesus is going to rapture us soon. All right. What else? Let's see. Teresa Diversa. I know I, I butchered your last name too. I'm sorry. Amen, Tom. Well said. Jesus' blood is so beautiful and precious. I can hardly wait to see the actual face of Jesus. There just won't be enough words. I love that last line, Teresa. When you see Jesus face to face, there just won't be enough words. I don't know what it's gonna be like. I know one thing, it's gonna be amazing beyond what our brains can comprehend. When we're face to face with Jesus, which is gonna happen very soon, it's gonna be mind blowing, but it's gonna be wonderful. And I don't know if we're going to want to, I don't know if we're just going to fall at his feet and cry. I don't know if we're just going to start talking and rambling. <laughs> I don't know what he's going to say to us. I'm hoping he says, well done, good and faithful servant. But man, just to know that that's going to happen really soon blows my mind. And I really do believe it's going to happen really soon. Jesus He's coming to take us home. Do you realize 
We're going to be face to face with our King, our Savior, our Lord, the Good Shepherd. Oh, man. You have to realize something. And I've said this many, many times. If you're saved, if you belong to Jesus and you're saved, what you're living through right now is the closest you're ever going to be to hell. Do you realize that? If you're saved and you belong to Jesus, what you're living through right now is the closest you will ever be to hell. But if you're rejecting Jesus, if you're rejecting Jesus, and you're just like, I don't need to believe in him, this is the closest you're ever going to be to heaven, is living your life on earth. Don't. Don't push off getting to know what Jesus did for you. Don't. You'll regret it the moment the rapture happens. You'll regret it the moment the rapture happens. You need to know that Jesus came to earth, fully God, fully man. He put on human flesh. He was God. He was man in the same body. And he was perfect. And he lived his life 33 years. He never sinned once. He was perfect. And he came here for one reason and one reason alone, to shed blood, to take away sin. He was the lamb slain, the lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. He came here to die. He came here to bleed, to shed blood, because without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness or no remission of sin. Jesus came here to shed his own blood to take care of the sin problem, because all of us are sinners. I know people don't like to hear that. They like to say, I, I'm more good than bad, so I may go to heaven. No, you can be 99.9% .9 good, but God is not going to hang out with your 1% sin for eternity. That's why he sent his only begotten son to die and take care of the sin problem. So all you have to do is say, oh, Jesus, I am a sinner. And I need forgiveness. And, and I understand. I believe in my heart that you came to the world from heaven. And you lived perfectly. And you died on the cross and you shed blood. You were buried in a tomb. And on the third day you rose again. And you're coming back. And I believe that. I believe in your finished work. I believe that you did everything. And I believe that I'm saved by grace. Which is an unearned gift of God. Through faith through believing in Jesus. And once you believe that, you understand the power of that blood, that it will remove your sin from you and it will wash you white as snow. When you believe in that and you say, yes, Jesus, forgive me, I'm turning to you. I believe in what you did. You're saved then and you're born again. And the Holy Spirit, God places the Holy Spirit inside you. He seals you unto the day of redemption. And at that moment, he'll never let you out of the palm of his hand. He'll never let you out of the palm of his hand. You will belong to the God of the universe and you will spend eternity with him. And I always have to say the flip side of this coin, that if you continue to say, I don't need that, that's crazy. I don't, I just reject that. I don't need that. One day you will be face to face with Jesus, a righteous judge. And I promise you, you won't say you're unfair. You will say, because you're listening to me right now, you will say, I heard people talk about you. And I heard how they said that my sins, that you paid for my sins. And I said, I didn't want that. So I understand that I don't have payment for my sins because I rejected it. And you'll be let off to hell. And you won't say he's unfair. You will say, oh, you're a fair and righteous judge. Do you really want to do that? Hell is not a party. Hell is weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. And I don't want anyone to go there. That's why I bring it up. Jesus paid for your sins, man. Grab hold of that. Say, thank you, Jesus, for your grace. Thank you for your blood. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you, Father, for sending your only begotten son. Thank you. I want that. Because, man, I'd run to the front of the line for that. I'll take your grace and mercy. Thank you. Thank you for dying for me, Jesus. That's what I got. That's what I got for you today. Oh. What a friend we have in Jesus. 
I'm going to shut the camera off now and I'm going to pray for every person who watches this video. And if we're not raptured today, and today is a perfectly good day for the rapture, but if we're not, God willing, I will see you guys tomorrow. I love you.